is a video about my work in the laboratory of Food from Wood in Limpol in Switzerland. It's a research project uh, that we want to find out if we can decompose wood-based plant material with the help of edible insects. The idea is that we can reorganize the decomposing process so that uh, we can produce food with it. Mostly with the help of um, beetles from the genus of dynasty, the rhinoceros beetles, flower beetles and stag beetles. But what I find here while checking the substrate of a breeding box on the surface are some flower beetles. But actually I put in here Alomirino or Tripoxidus dichotomus, a dynasty beetle. So why do we have here Cetonia aurata? This is the European flower beetle that you find everywhere in compost piles. So, a female of this Cetonia aurata must have entered our breeding room and laid eggs in the substrate that she loved most it's decomposing plant waste. So you see that uh, a lot of these Cetonia aurata flower beetles, they're also very nice with a shiny metallic green color. But that's not bad because if we want to find out whether we can use European beetles also, Cetonia aurata would be one of the candidates. There's a one problem with it because they need hibernation to develop to adults, so they need one winter so that they can develop to uh, complete adult animals. That's a complication of the process. So we're more focusing on tropical insects like the lot of us you see here from Tripoxilus dichotomus. This is the famous Japanese beetle called their Kabuto Mushi. This is one of the most famous beetles in the beetle breeding scene in Japan. So they're everywhere in the shopping centers. You can buy these larvas and also the food from them. So here on the right is the dynasty beetle, Tripoxilus, and uh, on the left is Cetonia. Aurata. You also see the difference in the way they move, Cetonia, they move on their back, so with the legs up. And mostly Tripoxilus, Dynastic Beetles, they are on the side. That's easy for you also to, to see whether if you find a larva in a compost pile, whether, you, whether it's a Dynasty or it's a little beetle. That's an L3, very young one, just molted. So after two months, when we put the female of Tripoxilus dichotomus into the substrate, we already find L3 stage larvae. The process goes fast, depending of course of temperature. So here in our processing rooms, it's between 25 and 26 degrees. That seems to be the optimum for the development of larvas of tropical dynastic beetles, but not only for them, also for our European Cetonia aurata, as it seems here. Here I find a lot of L2 stage larvas. This is a Cetonia also. This is a Alomirina on the side, rolled in, now they're typical, you can judge it by the way they, they look, whether it's a dynasty or a rose chever, a flower beetle. The project handled with a substrate that is lacking nitrogen, I mean in the in wood material, uh, wood-based plant waste, there's not a lot of nitrogen. Nitrogen is the base of amino acids, so 
Why can the larvas be so big and fat in a substrate that lacks nitrogen? So the trick they use, these beetles, is that they cultivate in their gut microorganisms that can fix nitrogen from the air. And that's the magic trick why in a substrate devoid practically of nitrogen, larvas with so much protein and fat can exist. It's one of the wonders of nature. So we will find, want to find out where, which insect larvae uh, we can use for our processing, how we have to mix and add substrate so that the insects grow best, how many of them we can put in um, an amount of substrate so that we don't have to add new substrate anymore because that's also one of the points of food from wood. When we start the breeding we just put the larvas in hundreds of liters of fermenting plant waste and then we wait for 100 days. We do not have to eat food nor water because the larvas they live in their food and in their water. They do not need anything more and after this period of growing we want to find out which insect species is the best for our processing. Yeah, we have different substrate of course, we have substrate with leaf material that contains a little bit of nitrogen, we have substrate with sawdust that practically has no um, nitrogen and one of the secrets of the process is also that this kind of decomposing here you see the on the on the right is a flower beetle tetonia and on the left is the <laughs> I think she picked me the finger on the left is the rhinoceros beetles yeah it's it's a um, it's a processing of wood-based plant material that is aerobe. A lot of decomposing processes, um, they are anaerobe, so it is produced in, um, with a lack of oxygen. But it, and then also the, the organisms uh, develop uh, dangerous gases for animals like ammoniac ammonium and um, methane. So in a fermenting process with only uh, with an air aerated process there is no danger of methane or ammonium that is a, a problem for the insect larvae. Also the process the substrate material smells very good like the forest a natural forest soil and the larvae, as you can see, they like it. The deeper we go into the substrates, the more of the dynasty the larvae we find. It seems that the Tetonia arata of flower beetles, they are living in the upper layers of the substrates, and the dynasty larvae of Drypoxylus dichotomus, they like to live in the more compacted, deeper layers of the soil here it's on all the, also in a, an hour of time. Of course I'm counting all the insects, finding out how many liters of substrate are good for how many insects so that the substrate is not overpopulated and then uh, problems can arise with cannibalism because if they do not find enough food in their substrate they reduce the amount of animals by eating each other. So let's see how heavy they are on a weight scale. These are L2 stage larvae, so they are just before the mold to the third and last stage. This is Tetonia aurata. It's 
some grams. So they are around two grams now. They are also L3 stage now, Cetonio, Aurota. But to develop, they need to pupate and stay in the substrate during the winter. So if we would uh, use them as edible insects, we can use them as edible insects, so we have to harvest them in this L3 stage. Now this is a Tripoxylus dichotomus L2, they are 5 grams, they are approaching the weight for mold with about 7 or 8 grams, so let's see how heavy they are, this is a small L2 one, 3 grams, so if they mold from L1 to L2 they are about 1 gram or a little bit more. So you can chart, so this is a very very young L2 stage, so this is around 1 gram. It just molded to L2 stage. That's our project here. In the next three years we want to find out how we can organize this uh, processing of decomposing plant waste with edible insects. If you are interested, we have a Skype food channel about edible insects. Go there and have a look. There's a lot of other material about edible insects. And of course you can stay here also in the beetle breeding channel. I know that some people think, yeah, why eat this insect? Yeah, um, in a lot of countries there is no alternative. There's not much water, but there is plant waste. So why having cows that need 100 liters of water a day? instead of these larvas that do not consume any water at all and you don't have to feed them. Thanks for watching.